I would now like to introduce a note sent to President Roosevelt by Rear Admiral Rinosuke Ichimaru, who died during the fighting at Iwoto, the site of the fiercest battle of the Greater East Asian War. Rear Admiral Ichimaru died valiantly on March 26, 1945, when leading the final assault in the battle. On March 17, nine days prior to his death, Ichimaru gathered together all soldiers still capable of moving in a cave 20 meters below ground. Then, Commander Mase, Ichimaru's second in command, stood before the troops and read a note to Roosevelt aloud. After the note was read, Captain Murakami, who was in charge of communications, strapped a Japanese version of the text to his stomach. Commander Akata carried an English translation. Then, together with General Kuribayashi, Rear Admiral Ichimaru removed all epaulets from his military uniform so that he would meet a courageous death as a subject of the Japanese Empire in the final assault. Soldiers of the American Navy discovered the two versions of a note to Roosevelt from the bodies of Captain Murakami and Commander Akata. At the last minutes before his death, facing the prospect of losing Iwoto to the enemy and having his own life taken, Rear Admiral Ichimaru wrote in his note the importance of living with a sense of humanity. It was undoubtedly his intention to continue to struggle for the grand ideals and eternal righteousness of Japan, even after his death. Rear Admiral Rinosuke Ichimaru of the Japanese Navy sent this note to Roosevelt. I have one word to give you upon the termination of this battle. Approximately a century has elapsed since Nippon became widely affiliated with the countries of the world after Commodore Perry's entry to Shimoda. During this period of intercourse, Nippon has met with many national crises, including the undesired Sino-Japanese War, Russo-Japanese War, the World War, the Manchurian Incident, and the China Incident. Nippon is now, unfortunately, in a state of open conflict with your country. Judging Nippon from just this side of the screen, you may slander our nation as yellow peril, or a bloodthirsty nation, or maybe a protoplasm of military clique. Though you may use the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor as your primary material for propaganda, I believe you, of all persons, no best that you left Nippon no other method in order to save herself from self-destruction. His Imperial Highness has clearly shown threefold doctrine. Yosei, Justice, Choki, Sagasti, and Sekkei, Benevolence. In the rescript of the founder of the Empire, and His Imperial Highness rules it in the realization of Hakkoichiu, namely, the universe under his sacred rule, in his gracious mind. The realization of this idea means that all human beings on the habitation of their respective fatherland and their own customs and traditions, thus ensuring the everlasting peace of the world. Emperor Meiji composed a poem during the Russo-Japanese War. Yomo no umi minahara kara to omoyo ni Nado nami kaze no tachi sagramu Yomo no umi minahara kara to omoyo ni Nado nami kaze no tachi sagramu the four seas of the world that are united in brotherhood 
will know no high waves nor wind. This poem won the appraisal of your uncle, Theodore Roosevelt, as you yourself know. We, the Nipponjin, though may follow all line of trade, it is through our each walk of life that we support the imperial doctrine. We, the soldier of the imperial fighting force, take up arms to further the above stated doctrine. Though we at the time are externally taken by your air raid and shelling backed by your material superiority, spiritually we are burning with delight and enjoying the peace of mind. This peacefulness of mind, common universal stigma of Nipponjin, burning with fever in the upholding of imperial doctrine, may be impossible for you and Churchill to understand. I hereupon pitying your spiritual feebleness pen a word or two. Judging from your action, white races, especially you Anglo-Saxon, as the sacrifice of the colored races, are monopolizing the fruit of the world. In order to attain this end, countless machinations were used to cajole the yellow races and to finally deprive them of any strength. Nippon, in retaliation to your imperialism, tried to free the Oriental nations from your punitive bonds, only to be faced by your dogged opposition. You now consider your once friendly Nippon a harmful existence to your luscious plan, a bunch of barbarians that must be exterminated. The completion of this Greater East Asia War will bring about the birth of East Asia co-prosperity area. This, in turn, will, in the near future, result in the everlasting peace of the world. If, of course, is not hampered upon by your unending imperialism. Why is it that you, an already flourishing nation, nip in bad the movement for the freedom of the suppressed nation of the East? It is no other than to return to the East that which belongs to the East. It is beyond our contemplation, when we try to understand your stinged narrowness. The existence of the East Asia called prosperity sphere does not anyway encroach upon your safety as a nation. On the contrary, we will sit as a pillar of world peace, ensuring the happiness of the world. His Imperial Majesty's true aim is no other than the attainment of this everlasting peace. Studying the condition of the never-ending racial struggle resulting from mutual misunderstanding of the European countries, it is not difficult to feel the need of everlasting universal peace. Present Hitler's crusade of his fatherland is brought about by no other than the stupidity of holding only Germany, the loser of the world war, solely responsible for the 1914 through 1918 calamity and the deprivation of the Germany's re-establishment. It is beyond my imagination of how you can slander Hitler's program and at the same time cooperate with starring the Soviet Russia, which has as its principal aim the socialization of the world at large. If only the brute force decide the rulers of the world, fighting will everlastingly be repeated and never will the world know peace, 
no happiness. Upon the attainment of your barbaric world monopoly, never forget to retain your mind the failure of your predecessor, President Wilson, at his height. This note was introduced by various media agencies in the United States. The ideals written in the note then transformed into the ideals of the United States and are now regarded as common sense by people throughout the world. Today, the note is a valuable part of the collection at the Annapolis Maritime Museum, part of the United States Naval Academy.